Good morning, everybody. This is The Professor with Day Trading for Success. Make sure you read this disclaimer. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. This is just strictly an entertainment channel. Hopefully, you can pick up some different ways to trade uh, on this channel, as well as a lot of free uh, setups for your platforms and free custom scripts that I put in here uh, that are pretty cool for day trading and scalping. So make sure you read that. Seek the advice of a licensed professional before you try to copy any of this, or for that matter, anybody on YouTube. Um, so this is what's considered to be the perfect one-minute layout today. I'll be trying to make uh, the professor will be trying to make his nut um, today uh, uh, for the week. I mean, trying to make the week start off with more exciting um, videos um, that have larger uh, potential profits. So we'll be trading a thousand shares of Nvidia today, and then if I get um, if things go well, I will. Uh, Later in the week, maybe do it for lower share size or maybe even the new mid-cap strategy. And they're making some ground on the new mid-cap strategy. On this channel right now, we've been trading the RV strategy, which we'll be trading today. And I'll show you about it in just a second. We'll be starting right at a half hour after market open, opens, which is in about nine minutes. Um, we also trade the open strategy, the escalator strategy, and then, like I said, we'll be doing, uh, maybe I said we'll be uh, doing the mid-cap strategy, and they're making some ground on that, so later in the week, maybe I can get another one of the mid-cap strategy videos out. In the meantime, what you want to look for on this channel is you want to look for all the free custom scripts, day trading for success, they say DTS. There's a lot of videos out there. Uh, episode 83 has a whole bunch of the scripts all in one. Also, you'd probably want to look for the video that shows you which way the market's going to go every day. Just type in which way the market's going to go. And there's a video that shows you the steps we go through to try to predict that, as well as a video to find the scanners, uh, all the scanner settings and how to set up your own scanners for high momentum so you don't have to subscribe to a service. Um, large cap, mid cap. There's three different ones that are now a, a, a newer um, scanner one out there. How to set up your charts, how to build this perfect one minute layout, as well as how to just, if you don't, you can just import it. There's a couple of different for a five minute, a one minute. I recently did another one and released it. And then um, there's an open strategy layout now that you're going to want to get if you like to trade the open. So um, all that stuff is available on this channel. Everything is free. I'm not selling courses. So if you like what you see, please remember to give us a thumbs up and to subscribe. You're basically the, <clears throat> the only reason we're here. So we'd like to get your support. So besides having the perfect one minute layout here, you can see here on this volume profile, see how those go in and out. This is very a very important thing to set up on the intraday. There's a video that shows how to set this up. This is not a custom script. It's available on Thinkorswim. It's just a matter of tweaking it just the right way. There's some confusion about whether it's a custom script or not. It is not a custom script. But there are a lot of cool custom scripts like this one, the scalpers indicator. The red shows the sellers. Green shows the buyers. The blue shows the volume. This shows the percentage inside any candle at that at that given moment, literally within a split second of the level two. So if you're not really proficient at reading the level two, then you're going to want to get this. You just want this anyway. Um, and then when you're trading large caps like the RV strategy is, which is a $25 billion minimum market cap of $1 billion minimum float, um, level two doesn't really come into play too much. You're going to get filled on a large cap. So we'll be doing 1,000 shares uh, today. I already have one small loss um, just a minute ago. And how do we set this up? So we've got just about six minutes. So I'm going to go over it very, very quickly. You basically sit now, since NVIDIA is going straight up, it's difficult to get a high rating for the RV strategy. And that's in book Day Trading Volume 1. All the books that we push are linked. I'm not going to go over all of them uh, again on every single video. But if you look at the under um, show more, there's a lot of different links for all the stuff that we really support and push here, which are books with different authors and stuff. But anyway, so it's there's a rating system in that book Day Trading Volume 1. And because we're just the stock's just been going straight up, it's hard to find the criteria to pick up uh, a high rated stock, something like this. But we wanted to trade it anyway. This is only rating a six. But still, we like to get a seven or eight in the rating in that book. But still, NVIDIA has been our go to stock. So the first thing you do is you look at the close of the previous day if you're doing the RV strategy. And the close under my picture was $721.33. Then you look at the ATR, average true range, uh, Wilder's average true range. So if you see when I go back over that candle, it was $20.23. You divide that in half. So it's going to be roughly $10.12. You subtract $10.12 from this close and you get the ATR low. You add 
uh, $10.12 to get the ATR high. You can see it's kind of right in the middle. Now you've made the mean average of this range bound. However, we expect it to break the range, which it's already doing, because that's what NVIDIA has been doing. <laughs> so I have a nice big swing in this that's going great. I have a 750 set to sell for or to take some profit right now on my big swing. So that's how we get our range. But then since we can't do pivot lines, typically we'll do pivot points on a four-hour chart. Um, but if you open up a four-hour chart, I have one minimized down here. You can see our price action's up here. I have no pivot points to grab. Like if the price action was down here, I could go across and mark wherever these candle wicks and bodies closed. And that's, the, that's some of the essence of the um, RV strategy. Instead, what I did is I marked Fibonacci levels with extensions, as you can see up here. Maybe look better on, the, on a, on a five-minute. You can see that I've got extensions up here for as it goes up. So you basically set that the same way. I grabbed it on pre on a pre-market high here, um, and then I, I grabbed the extensions and went up from there. So the, we'll see how those come into play. That's Fibonacci's. Fibonacci's are usually very well respected, uh, not always. So those will be our pivot points. Other than that, we're going to be trading the patterns and looking at the volume profile set on intraday. So you, I'm going to call out uh, one of the books is the pattern. Candlestick Pattern Playbook. Yeah, that's a link to that. But anyway, if you don't know your patterns, get a pattern book. That's one of the better ones. Um, and you're going to see me call these out here today. So uh, we'll be starting in just a few minutes. So again, one minute chart with the scalpers indicator, right? 15 minute chart so I can see the bigger picture. Okay, then you have your level two, which, you know, if, if I was trading momentum, this would probably be down like that. But since I'm not, that is totally not necessary. I do occasionally want to look just to make sure there's not a big, you know, I want to go down a little depth just to make sure there's not a huge number here. But really, more than half of this is hidden, so it does not matter. Um, then we have the active trader. Then we have a five minute, and then I keep these others minimized here. I also have a 15 minute here, or one hour here, and a 15 minute here. I keep these minimized mostly for when I set up things in the morning. Um, and I have a, a, a station here that has six monitors right in front of me. And then I have another completely different computer and station over here that has two monitors and then a laptop for swing trading, which I do in the mornings and the evenings. And then when I scalp, I do it in more. I would almost call this mid-morning, you know, it's just at this point for me. Um, and I will scalp for about a half hour, sometimes 45 minutes. That's it. Then I go to work with the rest of my life that I have going on. So uh, now I have a group of people up on Zoom. We'll all be trading together here. And I'm going to try to make – I used to try to make 5000 a day. I am trying to do better than that, but at least 25 k a week, 25 to 35 k a week. Um, and then I would relax, um, you know, to go on to do uh, other things. So I, I don't mind going lower share size or, um, you know, the mid, mid cap uh, strategy to uh, help teach and put out different uh, videos on the channel that maybe aren't quite as exciting, but more like how people, the majority of people really trade five shares, 10 shares, 20 shares, maybe 50, maybe 100. They might average down, you know, from 50, they might get up to 100 and hope that their position gets better and then they get out as it, as it comes back. If you're trading a range-bound strategy, this is more like a straight up. So it's a little different. It's kind of a hybrid of the RV. We're using its indicators, but there's not enough of them. Typically, you want to stop going sideways for an RV strategy. If you make a mistake, you could average down or you could just wait. And it usually will come back. Not always, so you have to have a trading plan. You have to be prepared to get out when it hits that fail safe, like, okay, I can only lose $50 on this trade. I'm out. Live to trade another day. Okay, guys, so I'm watching this right now. Um, we don't have a lot to go on, of course. Now, we did have some indecision candles here. All right, so an inverted hammer. This is This was a... Uh, bullish doji, I guess you could almost call that either one, which sent it up. And now we're having some indecision just before. We got about a minute left. We have a spinning top right here. Look at the volume come up. Let's see if this is going to pull the point of control. No, it did not move it up here. So remember, set this for intraday, guys. This will really help you call out. So what that told me was is that it was trying to push it up, and it didn't. It pulled back, and now it's looking more like it's it's met its match here. It's at the end of the move. So you had a, a spinning top, which is a turnaround 
pattern. So they learn your patterns, guys. Uh, in intraday now, they're so much more respected than they were even a year ago. So everybody's learning to read these. And then because we're all lemmings and we trade together, um, so this is interesting here, what's happening here. So we're getting a, uh, I'm getting a hanging man. This is still going up. So I am going to get ready to short, but I might not. So I might not go in right at 10, guys. I'm going to wait just a second or a half hour after market. So it's a big, wide hanging man. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and short there um, in anticipation that that goes down. Everybody's going short with me, so that's good. So that's a good opening trade. It's good to get a cushion uh, right off the bat. Now I'm watching this come in here. So on that spinning top, on that, almost you could almost call it a hanging man, but not really. I would like that to have been stronger than I would have maybe played it to down here. But let's keep a close eye to get ready to reverse. You're banking on the 20 and the 9 right now. Um, everybody is short. Yep. Okay. I saw some red there, but that was just a weird way you had your setup. Um, so a little bit of indecision. This is the point of control. I call it the magnet. There's a little bit of indecision right there. Is that going back up? Getting ready to reverse. If that starts to spring up, this might be the end of the play. So let's keep a keep ready. Oh boy. Okay. I send, I tend to like stretch my mouse further and further out this way for so suddenly I'm like trying to trade. I'm way out. Here. I'm like, what am I doing? Pull the mouse in. Um huge spread. Uh we're gonna look for some big slippage. I'm at 227. I'm 727 20 short. 727 20 short. Charlie, she hasn't come in yet today, so um, she'd be here soon to help with the chat. And we're going down. Here we go. Look at what the market maker is willing to give me. That's right here. So now the 50 cents, okay, it went right by it, would be a um, psychological um, point of turnaround. So this is, uh, that was a huge, okay, so volume's coming in to pull it up. Okay, so get ready here, guys. Is that point of control going to come down or is that going to die off? If the point of control comes down, we'll still, we're still looking for it to go down. But if it dies off, this could be the reversal. So let's see if this, drag, if this volume drags this down. This is the price action volume. This signifies the majority of the price action volume. So we're looking to see if this is going to pull this down a level. And that's going to tell us how to play this trade. Seems to be dying off here. Wow, that's a lot of that's a there it did it pulled it down so it's going to go down more, so we're looking for this to go down more guys so um, no no it's not I'm reversing right there ouch did you see that slip. <laughs> Oh, it didn't go down more. It went the opposite way. Oh, that hurt. That was a bad. Uh, that was a bad trade. That was over two thousand. Well, we'll get it back. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if everybody got hit with that. That was. Uh, that was dumb. So I'm at. Uh, I'm at twenty six forty two. Is this not? Is this not reconciling right? Let me just see. Did I read the candlestick wrong there from where the price action was? Six twenty six. Is that one of these deals again? Because that's going to drive me crazy if it's off again. It doesn't really seem to be off. Wow, that really hit me. Very annoying. Should have taken the 2,000. Yeah, I should have taken it. Should have taken it down here. I had an opportunity, and now I'm going the wrong way on this move. So... Uh, I'm going to reverse right there, get back up over 1,000. 
So I, I reversed on this consolidation and this uh, spinning top. So let's see, you could call that a, uh, a bearish doji, perhaps. It's just there wasn't enough of a, of a uh, wow, this is not going as good yet. I've been, I had trouble on Friday too. Not going as smooth as I'd like it to go here. Still got a nice cushion though. So take a look at here. These are, these are, I mean, they're in here, but this is what I'm going to get. The spread's so wide that, you know, I've got to look over here. Wow, there it goes down, 37, 31, 44, 53, 48. Um, it's like, like 55. Yeah, it looks like the 50 cent is more like where it's getting respected, so. Let's see if it gets back down there again. It popped off the at the... Uh, 725 50-ish area so that was a psychological it seems like it but it might stop at the 726 even so let's see it could almost slip this entire 200 bucks that i'm green here so that's why it's uh we're just hovering at the point of control all these are telling you that it's going to go down but there it goes back it broke through that wow that was so fast That was so fast to try to catch that at the 50 cent. I'm looking for something in the 725 range. Now it's 726.50, so it's actually going up. Oh yeah, I can see I'm red. I didn't even, I wasn't even looking at the price. Uh, I was looking at the price, but not my money. Um, yeah, 1,000 shares, I have a 2,000, Maximum loss per trade, 5000 for the day. I'm going for big money today, and I'm not having the best uh, beginning that's bothering me. I am looking for the price 27 25 50 or I get out at 727 Wow. It hit it, you know, it, it was such it was like a 40 cent Ah, uh, uh, that was terrible. Okay. 725.84. I couldn't catch it at the 50. I I, I was trying and it, it hit it a couple times. This is just like crazy uh consolidation move. I'm I'm glad I got something out of that. So I'm now long again at 725.84. Barely have time to look up at you guys because this action's so uh, fast with such a high spread that look at that, jeez. Uh, so I wish I would have waited because it did come down. There it is. That's what I was looking for, and it just wasn't doing it. Um, oh, man, it's gonna be hard again. It's because of the spread. We're doing market. We're not doing limit because you won't get filled or you get partials. Half the time we're sitting here when we try limit, we have done that. I haven't been doing it live, but you just don't get picked up. You're just sitting here because it, it's such a, a wide range. You're trying to get the lower end when you when you uh, buy the bid, and it, you'll see it for a se second, then it'll be 30 or 40 cents above it. You don't see it again, then you got to cancel all, then you got to try again, and then you don't get it again, and then or you get a partial and it flies way up and it only filled 200 out of a thousand shares, and then you you could flatten or you could try to type in real quick to adjust and then wait for another. It's just you lose so much time that it's better to. Uh, I, I mean, everybody trades a different way. If you were doing, um, you know, 50 shares, um, 20 shares, whatever it might be, you know, that type of trading might be well worth it for you to buy the bid and sell the ask and then the average down once or twice. Just stay within your plan, you know, because once you start averaging down, don't, then you don't have as much time to wait for it to recover on its consolidation up or down. So once you average down, suddenly 
you're only $25 down, you're going like, yeah, but if I just average down, I can make 25 bucks in just a split second. But then suddenly you're 50 dollars down or 75 dollars down and you're like oh sh shit you know should i average down again can i afford it oh i'll average down again now i'm 120 dollars down you know it's just but it's gonna come back i know it is you know it just but if you just stay say i'm gonna trade a half hour say i'm gonna trade an hour say whatever it is you're gonna trade uh make that plan nice 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 okay so let's see off this uh so this is an extension here. Boy, it seemed like it respected it, right? So that was at 729. It didn't really get there. Um, wow. So I could I could have grabbed that for a little a little downward scalp, but um hmm. I'm going to take that. It's, I don't think it's going to come. And that got me 4K. So it doesn't look like it's going to reach all the way to that extension. So I decided to bank it and then uh, play the odds that it's not going to do that. I could be wrong. Like that. Wow. Okay. So it went way above the 28. Is it going to hit that 27, 29? Uh, I just wanted to. It looked like it was going to fall real quick and I was just taking the money, you know. I'm sorry, I knew I was in the middle of making a point that now I've lost, but um, it was something about trading with limit orders. Yeah, I've got like this bug right here. Get off the screen. There you go. Uh, just get attracted to the light. Um, now it's over there. That's okay. At least it doesn't look like a candlestick pattern. <laughs> I'm looking at their Zoom picture anyway. But okay, so um, we're sh I'm short seven. She just uh, Charlie's here now, so the chat is happening. Um, I'm short seven twenty eight twenty four short. Uh, seven seven twenty eight twenty four short. Now we had a hanging man at the top of that bold big move here and then we had a second one with a triple chin <laughs> and now we're going down um this is about all we got to go on because we're in the middle of the volume profile so we're looking for it to pull back to this magnet this point of control all the time this is where most of the price action is so you see these little blue lines over here these big sort of fat blue lines you're looking to see those go across as it and that'll pull the price action where they are above or below where you are now that's why you really want to set that um you know you want to set your uh volume profile for intraday it's very it's very helpful and then you want to look at the scalping indicator so buyers went down with volume so volume and buyers went down so it looked like this was more of a seller's kind of a situation going on here that's why i am short now but it, now it's starting to Tell me to go the other way. It's but I'm it's almost even money. I will slip two hundred dollars, so I can't even think about scalping here. I've got to wait till this is green, a big number, uh, or or I'm getting red so much that I have to get out. So um, a little a little scary here because some might call that a spinning top on the bottom of a downtrend. A downtrend shouldn't be just one candle. The the problem is you don't know how everybody else is going to read the patterns. So if it's not seriously a definitive pattern, it's like rolling the dice. Uh, uh, but if you start to get definitive patterns, you know, and then you, it's always good to look over to see what are they seeing here. So here on a five minute, it's a solid uptrend. This is a spinning top hitting against the fib. This is saying reversal. This is saying it's going to go down. So if you, this is when you look for confirmation that you're getting over here where it's kind of inconclusive. The 15 minute is also going down. So this looks like it's going to go down along with the volume dropping with buyers. So if you see volume start to come up with sellers, you know, you got to ride the wave. Right now, the buyers are still kind of winning here. But when you see this go up, then you know you're going the right way. So another indecisive candle here. This is the bottom of a, of a trend. You might call that an inverted hammer if, this is, if you want to call that a trend, which is a pretty big leap. Okay, there we go. So we are going down. We're finally getting a move that I could 
you know, maybe get out if I wanted to. Nope. So I'm in just just in the wrong position to uh, 28, 24. So I'm like right, I'm like right here. Here's where my position is. So it's kind of just making it so I can't take a trade because of the slippage. So everybody else, there's a lot of people right in the same area with me. So we got a good, you know, we got a good start. It's not going to be a 20K day, it doesn't look like, um, but it's not a bad start. I, I, I wish we could have agreed to do 1,500 shares, but not everybody could do that. Um, oh, I don't like that it's kind of creeping. It's stair-stepping up, and I don't like that look. I don't like that feel. Um, again, if I reverse, I will lose, you know, a couple hundred bucks from whatever direction I want to go. There we go. So we look at the uh, $28 for resistance. Look at the $27.50 is a support. Um, just hit it and bounce back up. Then we look, excuse me, for the $27 if it goes that low. Okay, so it's getting very strong. Look at the sellers here. Okay, this is at the top now. Volume's increasing with this move. Okay, so finally the reversal that these were calling out seemed to be happening there. Oh, and I did I just miss it? Seriously? It seemed like it was going to go keep going. It was pretty strong there. It's barely enough for me to reverse. I kind of thought we were going to have bigger moves. I don't like this consolidation that it's doing. Here we go. Here we go. Wow. Well, that was a that was a big downward thing there. It, hit, it broke the 27 for a second. See if it goes down there again. I, I might turn around down there, guys. Let's see how low this goes. 26.50 maybe. 26.50. Can it get down that low? Wow. Was it 68 for a split second? Oh, I'm gonna take that. What did I get that? 47. Wow. And it hit the point of control down here, but I banked it, so I broke six. I'm at 726.47. Seven twenty six forty seven. So, if this keeps going down, I have to reverse. Let's see what happens here. Now I did get out, and uh, when when really it called for it to keep going, I was going by the half dollar. I was looking at. I almost did it at, at seven twenty seven even, um, and then it, it 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 broke it really quick. So yeah, I'm I'm betting it's going to turn back around, but. And I'm only going by the psychological supports. Uh, and then this right here would be the next place where it would turn around. Here's where most of the price action is. So I know I got close enough to this and I banked that money that it was worth taking the chance that because um, I don't want it to shoot way up and start consolidating up here. Then I can maybe take some scalps. Um, so because uh, that, that's could, what could happen here. Or it can consolidate right here and I'd only be down 100 and 150 bucks or something. Um, so let's just see what happens because I'm way down. What did I get? 47. So I'm right here, just, just above the point of control. So I'm in a good, I'm in a good spot to hold through a consolidation period. Maybe you never can tell. Now, now we have a hammer. Okay. It's not a dragonfly. That is a hammer. That is a reversal sign. So you've hit the point of control and you have a hammer at the bottom. That would, you would call that a downtrend. That's at four candles. So um, now you're reversing, and there you go. Wow, it's already huge. Okay, so um, that's a pattern. Learn your patterns, guys. There's links to the books here. And learn to um, control the trades by getting trading in the zone. I'm, I'm just a constant advertisement for books. But, I mean, it is, it is important to read these things and to study these things if you're going to be a, a day trader or a scalper. Oh, man, I, I let that thousand drop off, huh? Wow. I want bigger moves for the stock. We are used to bigger. Okay, here we go. This is not something I actually want to see. Uh, but it might pull this, this might pull this point of control up. See it coming in? And all the people, this is where all the price action is. They're just, it's like, a, it's like a stampede coming toward this price action. So you see this pop up. It should push this up. So let's see what happens here. I mean, it depends on how you want to look at it. It's already happening. I look at it like this is alive. It pushes it up. 
it, it, it helps confirm which way the stock's going to go. This is important stuff to know when you're reading, you know, when you have your indicators set up correctly, they really help you. And then knowing your patterns. These are both reversal patterns, right? Hammer, inverted hammer, both telling you this is going to go up. And now you've got this right in this area that could pull the point of control up will literally be literally be like a trampoline push up here to push this up. So let's see if that happens. I want it to happen. I'm going the right way for that to just pull that up. Now this could just, there it goes. No, did it? No, it didn't. It just extended. So let's see if it, uh, yeah, it just kind of got a little longer. So this is still waiting to, I look at it like a snake just coming out here. <laughs> no, it's just, so now we're getting an indecisive candle, which isn't the best thing to see to, but there's still 45 seconds for this or 40 seconds for this candle. So yeah, I could have got a thousand bucks a couple times, but it would have only been like six or seven hundred, and then I might have been going the wrong way. So you've got to play these uh, large cap. Oh, did it pull it up? It pulled it up, didn't it? I missed it. Yeah. So this got. So this is going to be like a springboard for it. Oh, I was looking the other way. So there you go. Now the price action's below it. So what I like to see is this fall off. The fact that it's staying here is a little disconcerting. Because we don't want it to pull it back down. This should be falling off now. It moved it. Um, no, it's coming back up, so that's not good. So this could pull it right back down again. This is coming out here. This could pull this down along with um, the price action, which means it will be below where I am here, or roughly. I'm at 726.47. I'm down here. Oh, there we go. See it coming here? Now you got one. Now you got one coming here. So this one should be fading. They're coming up here. And that's going to pull the point of control up even further. I like to see that, which means that this is supported, continuing to go up. Now you had a spinning top here, which sometimes signifies a reversal of an uptrend. But I'm not sure we want to call that an uptrend yet. Look at it come up here. This seems to be frozen here. I'm, I don't think this, this is old price action. <coughs> this is new price action. Look at it go. Wow. So we're up to 28. We broke $28 there. 728. So it's retracing where it was. We like it. We're on board with this. Nice trade, guys. Everybody's long, I hope. No, somebody's short. Ouch. That's hurting. Well, there's no guarantee. I mean, my opinion is this is going to continue to go up, but then look at that. So the short person, oh, you got out. Okay, good. You're going long now. That was a great dip to get out. That was awesome. So, um, yeah, because I was up at 28. It was all the way down at 720, 727, 20-something. He flipped, it looked like. That was perfect. That was a great scalp. I don't know what the slippage was, but volume went up. Indecisive sellers. Rickshaw man right here. Sign of a reversal to go back down. Not what I want to see right now. Oh, man, really? I should have just reversed up there. That was such a great trade up there. And, uh, Coming back up again. But a rickshaw man's a pretty strong reversal sign to go back the other way. That's what that is. Some people might call that a bearish doji on the top. It's a bearish. I know on Friday I got a bunch of emails that I kept calling a a bearish doji a bullish doji. My mistake. I I did it like five times. I knew what it was. I just said the wrong word. I can't help it. It's not edited. I can't I can't fix myself. <laughs> so, um, but hopefully you learn. That's why I say like you need to learn yourself. And I'm just giving you demonstrations. But um, yeah, it's definitely a bearish doji, meaning it's supposed to go bearish. 
when it's at the top, when you get a doji at the top of a trend, it's showing a reversal, which then makes it bearish. If you get it at the bottom of a trend of going down short, then it's a bullish doji. And I was calling it the wrong way. I was naming it the wrong way. I knew what it was. I just don't know the words that come out of my mouth sometimes. Nice. Really want to ride this for a bigger play. So I might go off this fib. Let's see, 729. Let's see what it looks like when it gets up there. This is going to pull the point of control up at any second. Look at it coming up. And that's going to give it a little boost when it flips it up. There it goes. And you just see how it went up with it? It was like a boost. Oh, wow. So it broke right through that. So it broke through the 729, 729, 5720. It broke all the way through uh, that other fib. So that's a, that's a double fib there. Oh, wow, it's heading toward the ATR. I didn't see where the ATR was. Okay. So that is the biggest respected line here. Should be, anyway. So well, let's see if this price action keeps pushing this up. I'd like to see this get to 10K. I'm not going to jump off this, guys. You know, often I trade by just guessing, um, you know, the pivot points. But since the pivot points are the weakest part on a totally ascending, you know, a stock that's just ascending straight up. Um, it's a wing and a prayer. I'm going to play the trend here. Here I could try to count, show these, but again, I was dealing with slippage enough where it was hard to take a lot of scalps there. It's working out for me, as you can see. Um, nice. That is a seriously strong move. We just broke 730. So can we actually get up to the ATR? This would be a spot I'd be worried. I would I would look to reverse a lot more in that area. Um, wow, time got time went by fast. My God, I've only got like five minutes left to trade here. That was fast. Hopefully, you guys feel that way that are watching. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I I'm shooting for at least 10k. That's my goal. I don't want to jinx myself. And I don't want to lose this fantastic trade if it starts to shoot off this. So let's see if this fib gives it any kind of support. If it breaks down, if it definitely if it breaks down here, I'm gonna I'm gonna reverse. So let's just see. And and, and bank and bank mostly bank that I'll still be at eight something. Um yeah, that's not good. Okay, so that's a sign of a reversal. Not good. So that's a doji. So you would call that a bearish doji right there at the top. So we need some some green patterns to tell us that that's just a momentary pause, like this nice one right here. It's a nice big. We want a solid. We don't want a hangman. Oh, nice. It's going up to the ATR. It's going up to the ATR, guys. <laughs> wow. So it broke 731. Is it going to bank off that ATR? Get ready here, guys. There's my 10K. Do not lose the 10K. Wow, I'm, I'm actually going to take that and just bank it. And then I will go long again on a dip. If it gives me a dip, I'm going to slip past this entire green. I need a bigger dip. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Give me a bigger dip, guys. Drop below the ATR for a second. Drop below the ATR. Eighty, seventy-four, ninety-two. Man, it's gonna get up to one seven thirty-two. Is it gonna break seven thirty-two? Oh man, it did. Ouch. All right, I don't want that to go back below ten k, so I'll get out. I really thought it was going it, to, just, it just keeps going. So I have to call it here in a minute and go the other way or just call it a day. I am at time. I'm just a, a minute from my time here of calling a half hour trade for the day. Wow. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take that and flip around. Okay, clearly I should have stayed in my position. Thank God. I don't want to sell it. I, I, I think it's going to turn back around. Uh, okay. Okay. So that's bad. So I do have a 2K max loss, but I'm struggling with the fact that I broke down below, uh, that I broke down below the, uh, the 10K, that I was up to 11K at one point here. This is, this is the chances you have to take. Oh my God, it's getting worse. Seriously? I will start thinking about a lesser loss here. This could be the end of this move. Since it's broken back to the ATR, if you if you traded via the rules of the RV strategy, I am holding this way too long. Uh, I should have I should have got rid of it when it broke back through the ATR. But maybe it'll break back through it here. Okay, so right now I could get out with my tail between my legs and have 10k, possibly, possibly. Uh, this it could slip the distance here but let's see if it breaks this ATR I'm, I'm not looking to reverse right now at this particular moment here I'm looking just to get out with a profit okay Okay, now I could have got out, but since the scalpers indicator was at the tie here, you know, I'm just, uh, is this, this is when you say to yourself, like, it's giving you a chance. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're going to, you're going to go back again. You're going to go back and lose again. How many of you have said that? Or you said, no, but you've got to learn to hold it longer. Like the other guy does that trades, he holds it and it always works for him. Back over 11. Whoa, whoa, nice. Now I could definitely get out without slippage here. That is such a big move. That is a huge move, 100%. Okay, okay, we're going to stay a little longer. See, now it did work for, it worked for the other guy, if I'm your other guy. But uh, I'm definitely getting ready to get out. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't want this to fade again when I have it, so. Got lucky there that it kept going up. 33, $33, 733, nice. Okay, <laughs> take it there. I saw that red and I'm just like, that's good. You did good, that was a good recovery. All right, 12,430 guys. I don't think I'm, no, I'm not, definitely not in the lead, but I'm right there in the pack. Uh, whew. I don't know why I was more nervous that time. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that worked out pretty good. So remember, guys, if you like what you see, to subscribe. And uh, I'll be putting out uh, more videos. And um, we're just expecting onward and upward here, right? What a, what a market we're trading right now, huh? It's kind of hard to go wrong. I don't want to, I mean, I know some people struggling, particularly with the day trading. It can be really, really hard. I don't mean to make light of it. Just meant the overall swing trading. Another um, friend of mine was make, he made uh, um, like 172,000 in one day on a swing. And I was just like, dude, um, that's a lot of shares, and that's great, <laughs> you know. But if you get these big, large caps, and they just they're just going through the roof, um, you know. When you have a uh, everybody works toward most people work toward. I mean, most people are working nine to five and can't do anything or whatever the night shift, whatever. That's the reality. And you can't do anything. I understand that. Um, and it's tough. 
and you're trying to carve out $100 a day, $200 a day, $300 a day, maybe doing some side hustle like day trading, and you got to be really careful with day trading. Um, and remember, this is just showing you possible, the possible way it could go for you in a perfect world. Demonstration videos showing you different techniques, maybe giving you some tools to use to try this type of a strategy. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the bigger boys that trade, and a lot of you know this, there's a lot of bigger boys that watch here and have been doing really good with the RV strategy. One person's over a million dollars. I know I taught, taught that all the time, but there's quite a few that are over uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars since we started this in March. They're doing good. Um, but the, the people that have, if you don't know about the people that have money that's being invested long term with different uh, money managers um they have now have apps on your phone and literally every day it's just telling you showing you the tens of thousands of dollars you are green sometimes red um lately just like you know thirty thousand fifty thousand one hundred twenty thousand whatever and you're just looking at it like oh i made twenty five thousand dollars today and i didn't trade you know they're just showing it on their phone like that's a great app i love that app you know but of course that's a <laughs> that's a you know that's a two-edged sword right that could go the other way at any time anyway i i like the uh that they've added things like that that you can just watch because people are trying to create annuities with their side hustles whatever it might be that you don't you have this passive income or at least somewhat passive you're doing something that maybe you like for your side hustle, right? You're doing something maybe you enjoy that it's not. Maybe you don't have to answer to somebody. Maybe you don't have to deal with a customer on your side hustle. There's a lot of like Amazon side hustles for that or um, what is that other company that you do? There's a lot of people. You see all the YouTube videos about it all and uh, not having to answer to anybody. I mean, isn't that, isn't that great? Some, some ways just working, if you don't like it, it's, it feels like, you know, I don't know what slavery feels like, so. I don't want to misspeak, but I feel like you're enslaved to the job that you don't like because you just have no choice, you know, just no choice. And um, we're all looking for that bit of an edge and to find something. So I hope you can find it day trading, guys. I'm trying to wrap this around to something positive. <laughs> so I started going down, a, going down a, a bad rabbit hole there. But yeah, you know, so that's what day trading for success is trying to do. Make you $100, $200, $300 different strategies, but don't just watch here. Um, check out other people, read the books, um, and hopefully it'll come together for you. I'm certainly rooting for you. It makes me feel so good when people are doing well, when I get their emails and their comments, that it's working for them. And just, it's just, there's no better feeling than that. As you get old, I mean, as you, most of you know, I taught math. As you get older, um, you know, it's not as much about you, no matter what, you know. Ultimately, it's it's the ultimate selfishness because if I feel good because I made you feel good, that's really selfish, isn't it? I'm still selfish because I'm getting something out of it. So is there a way not to be selfish? I don't think so. Read Freud. I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I do go off. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Stay green out there.